everybody, welcome back to the last episode of my photo slideshow application. Uh, today we are going to go through the building of the application, containerizing it, and deploying it using Docker, Helm, and Kubernetes. If you want to go back and watch this from the beginning, I will put links in the description for all of the videos, including the first one that will let you watch the entire thing from the beginning. All right, so as a reminder, uh, this is what we're building here, and this has already gone through in the, all the previous steps, but the uh, this is a, a basic application that's it's a web application for being able to upload images to a server that you take on your phone, and then they will show up on a big screen TV and kind of scroll through uh, one by one. Newest ones show up first, and then it continues on after that. Um, we've built the entire thing, the front end, the back end, and a uh, little server application that runs on the laptop that is taking all the photos in the photo booth. And now we'll go through the deployment process. So I really like to use Helm and I like to use Kubernetes and I like to use Docker just because I'm familiar with it. That's how I chose to deploy this application. First things first, let's take a look at the Docker file. Uh, the Docker file is what actually builds this entire thing and packages it up so it can run on Kubernetes. Um, I'm doing a build in stages here. So there are a total of three stages. Uh, the first one is using Go, the next, next one's using Node, and the final one's using Ubuntu, and I'll get to that in a second why that is. So uh, the first stage, we just use Go and we call it Go Builder. I'm going to go into my uh, backend server directory. We're going to copy everything from the host machine where the files are located into the directory backend server. And then we're going to run the basic uh, Go Build command, creating a binary called uh, dist slash server. Uh, that's really all there is to it. It's going to create the binary that has the web server on it. The next stage is using uh, Node.js container. And here we're going to go to the front end directory. We're going to copy a uh, front end from the host machine, which is over here on the left, uh, this front end directory here. And then we're going to run npm install and npm run build. So if we go look at the front end, uh, npm the in package JSON, we have npm install is pre-built. It's just going to grab all the dependencies and pull them in. And then build uh, is Vite build. So Vite is the uh, tool that's built for transpiling this entire thing. It works well with Vue, and that's why we're using it. All of this was pre-written. I didn't have to write any of this. It just came with it. After we build the two different stages, so we have the binary uh, for the server, and we have the front end transpiled code. Now we make one final container that is actually going to be the runtime. I'm using Ubuntu here, and the reason I'm using Ubuntu is because I'm using SQLite. Ubuntu comes with SQLite. I don't have to worry about installing it. So just grab the Ubuntu container and call it final. And then we copy from the Go Builder uh, stage here to uh, we copy in disk server to disk server and then we copy from the v builder stage disk static to disk static and then we expose port 8080 and we set the command to run slash disk slash server which is what kicks the server off and runs it in the background if you want to see more information on how to build and containerize an application i will put a link up here and uh, i did a whole walkthrough on this in a little more detail so Dockerfile done, this is what you would use to build the, the application. Next, um, I do want to jump into the Helm chart because that's the next important piece here. So uh, again, here on the left-hand side, slideshow app chart. Um, most of this is boilerplate. I use the uh, Helm chart uh, generator to kind of just build this out. Again, if you want to see that, I'll put a link up at the top and you can click on that. It's more details on how to create a Helm chart. Um, in here, we have the templates. I used a lot of these just right out of the box. I didn't have to change anything. The ones that I've changed are the ones that I'm going to review here. So um, the very first one here is config.yaml. Um, this is a secret that I had to create and it contains the session secret and the app password from the very from like the second part of this series where I talked about creating the server. The server needs to have a session secret, which is what it uses to hash the contents that it stores in the cookie for the password. And then the password is the actual password to match against. So user logs into the application, they type the password, it's, it's checking here. So you can set those at deployment time. Next is the deployment object. Uh, this is the the meat of how this thing actually gets installed on the server. A few things that I had to do to this just to get it get it all working. I had to set max unavailable to 100% here in the rolling update settings. What this allows us to do is it's not best for like high availability applications, but this was like 
running, you know, just for a party in a house. So if I had to redeploy, this will actually delete the current running application and then install a new one. It won't try to do a rolling deploy with zero downtime. It's going to have a brief period of downtime. And the main reason that that has to happen is because the uh, mounted file system is read write once, meaning that only one application can be writing to the directory. In this case, it's the directory that stores all the images. Only one application can be writing to it at once. And if something already has a write lock on it, then nothing else can launch. So you end up in a situation where if you have to do a redeploy, it just doesn't work. It, it will never launch the new, the new instance because the previous one has a lock. The previous one doesn't shut down because it's waiting for the next one to start up and you're in an infinite loop and it never launches. A lot of this stuff is also just boilerplate. It came with the template, pod annotations, all that stuff stays the same. Um, none of this has changed. I do add this uh, and from secret ref. This is where we're referencing this config that I just talked about in the previous one. So we're including the slideshow app chart, full name, a, a, a secret of that type. And you can see here that the secrets name is slideshow app full name or, you know, templatized. So it, it grabs it and builds it out. I add a couple, I had another environment here, a variable here called gin mode release. I didn't know this when I first launched it, but apparently gin, the web server, uh, uh, framework that we picked has a release mode. When you do that, it just runs a little more efficiently. It doesn't log as in, in, as much verbose data, and it just makes it so it runs a little more smoother. So I set that. And then we set the volume out. So um, we mount data to a volume called data. And if we go down here to the bottom, you can see we have a volume called data, and it's a persistent volume claim uh, that is claiming, um, a, 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 again, another volume claim of the same name of the application. Here in storage, you can see I'm creating the persistent volume claim. It has access mode to read write once, and I set a storage, and I set the storage class name. That's really all there is to that. So the volume's created there, and it's mounted here into slash data. Um, ports stay the same. This is all default. Liveness probe stays the same. I did add the liveness probe to slash ping. That's the location where we get the basic ping pong. It's just checking to make sure the server's running. Now, um, the next container that's in the pod is just a GS util uh, container. Um, since this is running on GCP, uh, GS util is used to read and write data to a um, like a storage bucket. And this doesn't do anything during the runtime in the application. You could you don't even need to worry about it being here. The reason I put this here is because after the party, I needed to get the photos off and put them somewhere where everybody could see them. And right now they're, you know, when it's storing them, it's just putting them in a directory. So I grab them, move them with GS util to a bucket, make the bucket available for other people to see, and then all the photos are public and people can take a look at them. Uh, that's really all there is that's going on here. I'm probably not even going to go over the details. And again, down to the volumes, and they're both mounted in the same volume. But you can see here that this one is set to read only true. So it does allow both of these of these runtimes inside the pod to mount this data PVC, but only one of them has write ability. The other one can only read. The next one we're going to go over here is the GKE managed cert. Um, I wanted HTTPS on this. I'm using GKE's built-in load balancer for um, for or ingress controller for exposing this to the public. So you add a managed certificate here and you give the domain name of the application and it just goes and gets you a certificate for free and it slaps it in there. It's pretty straightforward. Um, also just a really nice feature to have you can get an, get an SSL certificate really easily. The next file is values.yaml, which uh, I've discussed this in a previous video. So if you want to link to that, I'll put it up here. Values.yaml is where you set your defaults for the chart. So if somebody else installs this, they should they should copy this file and modify whatever they want and override what's in here. But this is the defaults, right? So we're setting it to my uh, Docker Hub uh, application name, so slideshow app policy is always uh, because I'm setting the tag to latest that way if it updates it's always going to pull it from Docker Hub it's not going to try to use cache copy in in GKE some of this stuff is just defaults I'm going to leave them blank all of this stuff is defaults here in storage we're setting uh, the capacity to eight gigabytes and the storage class name is empty manage cert here is set to false again because this is the defaults so when I deploy this, I have another values file where I've changed these things for my specific deployment. These are just defaults. Uh, the secrets are empty. And the ingress controller, 
um, is just is also the ingress is empty. Resources we leave empty, auto scaling is set to false. That's all the, the same defaults. Now, my values file itself here, if we go back to the left hand side, I've created a folder here called bin, and this is in this is git ignored, so that way it doesn't end up in git repo because it has secrets and things in it. But in here, values.yaml my values.yaml this is my overrides to that original values.yaml file and you see i'm just setting a few different things here i said i said 128 gigs of storage i set this class name to standard read write only or sorry read write once um, we set the domain name uh, for the application itself in the manage cert so now it'll go get the the certificate for the domain name i again i'm not setting the secrets here i'm actually setting this when i run the command to deploy it to helm so i'm just leaving those blank and then we enable the ingress so ingress is enabled um, i have to add a few annotations to get the gke ingress to work so I set the global static IP name. This is the IP address that I reserved for this application. We set manage certificate so that way it knows to look for this slideshow app manage certificate. And again, if we go look at the manage certificate, it's called slideshow app. So this is how it knows to get where to get the certificate from. Um, and we set the ingress class to GCE. This is what tells Google that you want to use their ingress and you don't want to supply your own. And that's how it makes the application available to the public. Um, one thing that bit me here, um, you do need to make sure that you set your path type to prefix or otherwise it doesn't work. It, you don't leave it implementation specific, which is what the default is. So let's leave that at prefix. And then we leave TLS empty um, because we are using this managed certificate here. Otherwise you would have to supply TLS information like a, a key and a secret for it to be able to place the TLS certificate in the right spot. Resources, I left empty. I, I, I don't care. This application is basic and it's running on an autopilot cluster on GKE. So I just leave it empty. It, it, it automatically applies uh, basic sets of resources that make the application run fine. And it did run fine. And I left auto scaling to false because again, with the file storage mounting, you could only have one running copy. If you really needed to scale this out, and productionize the entire thing, you would have to change your storage up a little bit. The best way to do that with GKE is to use a product that they call as File Store, and it's essentially an NFS server uh, in, in the cloud, and it allows you to get read, write, many mounts. But they're very expensive, and I didn't want to pay for it, so just didn't use it. We're using a basic disk. It has read, write once, and it works perfectly fine for this application. Always try to set up your application for its needs and not for way, way more, or otherwise you end up paying for it. So we got a Helm chart. We got a Docker container, and we're ready to deploy. Now, I have my very basic script here that I wrote here called build and deploy, and it does the job for me. So that way I only have to run one command and this thing goes out, right? So I'm using the Docker build X command since I'm running a Mac with an M1 chip, and it has to build the binary to work for uh, an AMD64 uh, architecture. So we're we're setting the, uh, this is somewhat new to Docker. So build X build, and we're giving it the push command. It's essentially the Docker build command, except for it allows you to set different platforms and build your application using multiple architectures, using actual containers to do the building. Next, uh, we're going to create the namespace in our cluster that's already been created on GKE. And then finally, we're going to run the Helm command. So Helm, Helm upgrade I is telling it either upgrade this or install it if it doesn't exist. We're naming it PhotoShare. We're putting it in the namespace PhotoShare. We're setting our values to my uh, bin slash values. And, and so what that does is it takes values.yaml in the chart, merges it with my uh, override copies, and gets the correct uh, settings. Then I'm setting a couple strings here. I'm setting the session secret and I'm setting the app password. And then finally setting the cube context here uh, is just telling this thing to always install this to the right cluster. So that way if I switch clusters, I don't end up deploying it to the wrong spot or something stupid like that. And then finally the path to the chart itself, which is just local here to uh, slideshow app chart and uh, boom, it'll install and uh, run the whole thing. Okay, so that's the whole application. Now I'm just gonna run the command and show you uh, the deployment process. It is very straightforward. I'm gonna run it now right here on the screen. So if you uh, pay attention to the bottom here, um, I'm just going to run that slash bin slash build and deploy and hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and run this and uh, do the whole thing, right? So it's not gonna take very long at all. Um, it's, it's doing the Docker build right now. 
and uh, and going from there. And that was it. It's done. Uh, it deployed deployed the whole thing. So <laughs> not not a whole lot to it. Uh, pretty straightforward. All right. Well, thanks for sticking with me and watching this whole thing. If you got something out of it, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my channel. I plan on bringing a lot more than this in the future. Thanks again for stopping by. And until next time, happy coding.